right, what we're going to talk about today are avoiding statistical pitfalls without really having any knowledge of statistics. You guys come from a, a wide variety, a, a wide um, spectrum of majors. And for those uh, gamer buffs out there, I'd be, real, I'd be really impressed if you know what game this is um, and what, uh, yeah, the historical significance of this particular game. We talked about in the first lecture that there is this, um, you know, there's this, it's, it's really nice to have a PhD in statistics to be able to understand the algorithms, the black box that, that goes, the black box that goes into analyzing data and outputting these um, fancy metrics and fancy graphs. But one of the points of this whole class, I want to remind you, the points of this class is that anyone without very much knowledge at all of statistics should be able to understand at least the data that goes into these black boxes and the output that comes out of them. And that's what we're going to focus on today, are the kinds of statistical pitfalls that you can sort of identify and overcome by just noticing the data and the output. So Carl's going to start first. All right, thanks, Kevin. So um, what, I, uh, what I want to talk about today in, in the first segment is talking a little bit about musicians and mortality. So here from Spinal Tap, it was tragic, really. He exploded on stage. They had a little problem with their drummers, if you haven't seen the movie. Um, and so there was a remarkable graph that was published that sort of went, made the rounds on social media a couple, of, a couple of years ago that I want to talk about a little bit and then um, sort of dissect. And this is a graph intending to show the age of death as a function of musical genre. So are musicians of some genres more likely to die than others? And what this graph shows is we've got the age of death for, uh, for, for female musicians in, in yellow, male, and blue, and so forth. And here, here's our axis. Um, we, for, so for blues, jazz, country musicians, they're you know, living a sort of normal lifespan, dying in their 60s, 70s, something like that. Um, but as we start to move toward more modern genres, we see, well, you know, punk musicians are, are dying really young, 35, 40. It's even worse for metal. And rap and hip hop is terrible. These musicians are dying at like 30 or, uh, or 35 years of age. At least that's what this, that's what this graph uh, seems to be showing. So when this went around on social media, we had a lot of, uh, you know, it often was with a tweet something like this, oh my god, going to make my girl quit her metal band, frown, 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 um, or something <laughs> like this, right? Um, so, so the question is, like, does this really make sense? I mean, we talked earlier on in the class about if something seems too good or too bad to be true, it probably is. Now, um, I might not be so surprised if there was a small lifespan effect on, on genre, but, uh, you know, uh, hip hop and rap musicians living half as long as country stars? I don't believe it. So when I saw this right away, I'm thinking, okay, this has got to be bullshit. Like, why is this bullshit? So, um, also, you know, at what was also presented at the same time, and this, this, this is from a popular article. In that same popular article, there was a, uh, uh, some tables about the various causes of death. And uh, these also sort of reinforce maybe some stereotypes we might have about what, what kills people in different genres. So in red and in blue are, um, are things that are more likely to kill people of a particular genre, green less likely. And so what this says is, um, you know, uh, bl blues and jazz musicians are more likely to die of, uh, of you know, uh, heart-related illnesses or cancer. Country musicians may die of uh, heart illness. So, you know, maybe there's something to... Um, Billy Ray Cyrus is achy, breaky heart and country. Um, do you, you guys don't know who this is. You just know the daughter, I guess. Is that right? <laughs> um, that's her dad. Okay. So, um, and, and he's got an achy, breaky heart. Um, so, 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 and then we, so we can go back and we kind of look and then we see, you know, over here in, uh, in causes of death by, by, um, by homicide, rap and hip hop stars, uh, you know, 50% of their deaths are being caused by homicides, according to this table. But they're very unlikely, it says, to suffer heart-related or cancer deaths. So this is like a really amazingly strong pattern, and we want to understand what's going on here. I mean, can this really be just because punk musicians, you know, um, you know, drown in their own vomit and, and death metal guys kill themselves and because of the, the gun culture that's sometimes glorified around rap and hip hop? Or is there something else going on here? Um, and, what, and there is something else going on here, and it's what we call right censoring. So to give you an illustration of right censoring, I want to kind of take a biological example and imagine that you've just gotten a four-year grant to go study the, uh, the, the sort of life history and survival of, uh, of, of chameleons in the Madagascar rainforest. Now, chameleons are notoriously short-lived, at least some species, and 
a long-lived chameleon may go for, say, two to three years. Um, and so you go and you, and you get the grant, you visit Madagascar, um, and so you're gonna, the grant's gonna run from uh, 2013 to 2017, and you're gonna sort of census the chameleons there. And so you look at the, all the chameleons that are born in the year 2013, and you record how long each one lives. And so some of them live full chameleon lives of almost three years, and others die as infants, and others die very young, and so forth. Next year, you go back, uh, do the same thing, and again, you get the same sort of data. Um, 2016, you go back again, and again, you get the same sort of data. But now what's happening is uh, not all of the chameleons that were born in, 20, in, uh, in 2015, sorry, are, are, uh, are dead yet, right, at the end of your study. Um, you go back in 2016, and again, you, you look at this, and now, you know, again, a bunch of the chameleons that are born in 2016 aren't dead at the end of your study. And so that seems like, that seems a little weird, right? So, I mean, first of all, you don't actually know, you know, how far on this goes. So you know, your, your study data really only goes right up to here. That's what you've got as a data set. And you think, well, that's kind of problematic because this guy in my data is listed as only living for a few months, but, you know, he might end up living for another three years. So let's get rid of those. They, that's got to be biasing the data somehow in a bad way. Let's get rid of those. So you say, okay, I'm going to get rid of these ones that go off the edge there. Um, and uh, so you're left with these data. So you write this up and you say, wow, you know, something's gone really bad in the Madagascar rainforest because the, the average age of death of the 2013 and 2014 cohorts was about two and the average age of death of the 2016 and 27 cohorts is, 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 is less than one year. So something terrible has changed in the Madagascar rainforest and it's so dangerous to be a chameleon in 2017. Um, I think you can see exactly where this is going, right? This is exactly what happened in our music example. The jazz has been around for well over 100 years, country music for 100 years. So there are plenty of stars in those areas that have had a chance to live a long, full life. You know, metal and, and, uh, and, and hip hop and rap sort of get started in, in the 80s, really. And you know, very few people sort of break into stardom at age 60. So these people are you know, 20 or so in the 80s. And so anyone who's died as a metal musician or a, or a hip hop musician has died prematurely. So it's exactly like we saw with the chameleons. Um, so this takes us back to this data. And now we can sort of see what, now we understand what's driving this trend here. These are organized chronologically in terms of the sort of year of, found, approximately chronologically in terms of the founding year of the, of that genre, right? And so these are falling off because mostly because of this right censoring issue. So when the author of the study writes, um, many musicians from younger genres, rock, electronic, punk, metal, rap, and hip hop appear unlikely to live long enough to acquire the illnesses of middle and old age. I don't think that we have good evidence of that. I would say instead, they have not yet lived long enough to acquire these illnesses because the genres are too new. And so instead, we've got these sort of inflated, by looking only at the ones that have already died, we've got these inflated estimates of, of um, you know, things like uh, homicide, suicide, accident, and, and so forth, sort of spinal tap drummers notwithstanding. Um, to be fair, the author is well aware of this in, in the article. So she writes, you know, this pattern reflects to some extent a co-found in the data. Musicians who are dying youngest belong to newer genres that have not existed as long as genres such as jazz, country, gospel, and blues. Consequently, they've not had the same opportunity to live a full lifespan. So she's acknowledging this right censoring problem very clearly in, in this statement. But the kind of thing I want you to understand is sort of with the way that the ecology of you know, the, the sharing of these, of these uh, you know, data graphics and such works, that message isn't getting to the vast majority of people that are seeing this graph. We talked in the, first, uh, in the first lecture, we talked about, well, what is, what is bullshit anyway? And someone said, well, it can be produced by this sort of game of telephone. And this is exactly a, a game of telephone. So there's originally a, a scholarly article that's quite reasonable um, that, that analyzes this, deals with the right censoring problem just fine, uh, and, show on, and so on. Um, the author then takes this step to write this up as a popular article on the web, which is admirable. More of us should be doing that and trying to communicate with the public. Again, this article makes the right censoring issue fairly clear. That's where the quote I read you is from. Um, but then the, the data visualization team that she was working with put together these data viz, neither of which makes any acknowledgement of the right censoring issue, right? Um, and, uh, and so then, worse yet, the Washington Post comes along and runs a story about this. Uh, you know, my view of it is that the reporter doesn't really understand the right censoring issue, and this isn't made clear in the Washington Post story. And then, 
people pick up on the Washington Post story and on these data viz examples, and they just attach, you know, one, like say, just attach a viz and send that out there and say, oh my God, I'm going to make my daughter quit her metal band or whatever. Um, and so it's this, it's this game of telephone where we start with something that, that may be good science, and by the time I see it on Twitter, it's, it's extremely, in my opinion, misleading, right, in terms of the impression that it, that it gives you. So the one other thing I want to do with this is we talked in the last lecture about correlation and causation, and we can view this whole picture in light of correlation and causation. So what we see from this graph quite strongly is that there's a correlation between the musical genre of, of a musician and that person's age at death, right? It's age at death is high in these genres, low here. So we know there's a correlation there. That's what the graph shows us. We also know that it doesn't make sense that your age at death somehow magically retroactively determines what musical genre you played previously. So we know the causality doesn't move this way. And so the causality's got to go that way, right? Well, no. That's the post hoc propter ergo hoc fallacy that we talked about last week. This happens first, that happens second. It's a fallacy to think that that means this causes that, right? You can't, can't jump to that assumption, but we're you know, likely to do so if we're not thinking about it carefully. So what else could be happening? One of the things that we talked about last time is that there could be an additional causal path. And here there is an additional causal path, namely the age of the musicians in the genre. So you know, what the musical genre is determines the age of the musicians in that genre, so there are no um, 80 year old rap or metal stars, or, or very, very few. Um, <clears throat> and the age of the musicians in a genre determines their age at death. If there are no 80 year olds, no one's 80 when they die. Right? So we've got these strong causal arrows going this way. Now, if you look very closely at the original study, um, I think the original study does establish that there is some causal arrow going this way. There do seem to be real differences in the, a, in, in the sort of mortality rates of musicians in different. Uh, in different kinds of uh, genres. And the argument is these are associated with lifestyle and, and so forth. Um, but my feeling is that these are swamped by this causal path, which represents the right censoring that we're talking about. And so you know, here you might have a few percent difference in mortality rates. But when you get your twofold difference in mortality rates, it's flowing through that path right there. And so that's just showing you how we can think about this particular right censoring problem in this context of, uh, of, of causality and, uh, and versus correlation and, and these sort of extra um, causal pathways. Mm -hmm.